What we got back uh, technically is called the carrier signal. So it's uh, it's basically uh, like tonal inflections. We don't hear um, the data coming back, but we do know that the spacecraft is operating and it's out there and it's waiting for us to to send a command to get it pointed back to the Earth. Okay, so how did you manage to pick up that so-called heartbeat signal again? Uh, well, it's it's through a process called open loop recording, which uh, we actually use quite a bit for um, spacecraft that do radio science that that send a, a signal through the atmosphere of a planet and uh, try to get a very f uh, faint signal back. So it's it's a technique that's that's used. Um, for science taking, and they transferred that technique here in order to uh, listen for a very faint signal from a spacecraft, mm. in this case from Voyager 2. I understand, Suzanne, that the huge dish in Canberra had been trying to detect a, a signal from the spacecraft. It was um, asked to do so early in the week. Was it the dish that picked it up? Yes, it is. It was uh, what we call DSS-43, the large 70-meter uh, antenna out there in Tittenbilla. Uh, it is a workhorse for Voyager. Um, it, it being in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the only antenna that actually is big enough with the right frequencies on board to listen to Voyager to. So it's it's the only antenna in the world that can uh, both listen and, and communicate with Voyager 2. And uh, we're very proud of it here in the U.S. and in Australia, you should be very proud of that antenna as well. We are very proud of it, and it's good to know it was successful on this occasion. So let's go back to what happened. Was it human error, which meant that the signal was lost? Um, yeah, we uh, we had been generating some commands, and we needed to make an update. And unfortunately, what happened is we, we grabbed the old command instead of the updated command. And the old command was uh, had a, the offset in the pointing. Um, and so it, it was a bit of a mistake on our part. Um, they don't happen frequently, and they don't even happen frequently in, after 46 years, but it, it is it is part of the business. And um, we do know that the spacecraft is has a heartbeat in this case and, and by seeing the uh, carrier. And so we're optimistic that we will uh, get the spacecraft realigned, if not during this commanding that we're going to try uh, later this week, there's also onboard fault protection, an onboard routine mm. that will, uh, in the middle of October, uh, execute a turn to point to Earth. So we may have to wait till the middle of October before we hear back from Voyager 2. Um, but uh, it's good to know by listening to this uh, signal that it's, it's okay. It can talk to us. It is good to know. And it's amazing how long this mission has lasted. Where is Voyager 2 now? Oh, Voyager 2 is um, in interstellar space, so it's past the heliopause, which is the bubble of charged particles that come out from our sun. It's uh, 12 and a half billion miles from us here on Earth, and it continues just to travel out away from us. Um, and it will go as long as it can, as long as it has uh, enough power to operate the transmitter, which we expect to be probably at least five more years, if all goes well. Finger, fingers crossed. It is an old spacecraft, but uh, it's been very, very resilient.